Hey guys, so I'm back here on the snow slope. We're in lovely Snoqualmie Pass right now. Nice and cloudy, a little bit of rain coming in and out. So this is the perfect time to talk about walking in snow. Now for most of you watching this video, this is gonna be more of an introduction to walking in snow. So if you've been through a mountaineering course, this is gonna cover everything you learned on the course. Or if you've just learned from like the Mountaineers or another organization or from your friends, a lot of this stuff is gonna be sort of the same thing. Uh, as well as there's a bunch of different names for the techniques I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk about four basic ways of walking in snow, um, which transferred at crampons very well. But uh, I may call it a certain name, but um, it's going to be most likely the same thing that you learned. As well as I'm going to try my best to show you every situation where we could use these walking techniques because they come in handy, or one is more appropriate to use in a different situation. Um, so I'm going to try my best to do that, but I may also throw out examples of uh, areas where that certain step would be better. All right, so first thing I'm gonna talk about uh, is just sort of your average step on snow. This is kind of the basis for every uh, step that you're gonna talk about after this, uh, and that's just the kick step. And so one thing we uh, usually wear in snow are these big heavy mountain boots. And so what we can do is use the weight of the mountain boot to help uh, guide our foot into the place where we want it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my left foot here and as I step forward, I'm just going to kick into the snow a little bit. Notice how it's not a gargantuan like uh, karate kick or anything, but it's like just a small little kick. And what that does is it helps compact the snow and sort of find a place for your foot to add more stability. Sometimes if you don't kick step, you can get some sliding on your foot. And if you slide your way up a mountain, you're gonna probably gain twice as much altitude as you would if your foot stayed in place when you stepped on it. So all you do is just a small little kick. It really doesn't take that much. And you just kick your feet in place. You build a little platform. Sometimes that platform still goes. But see, I'm just walking flat here. And by kicking my step just ever so slightly, it helps find purchase for my foot, even in situations where I could slide off. This is also really great to use uh, on the soft snow that we have here where it's really not hard to find purchase on our feet. But if we have crampons on and we're walking on a dry glacier or something with a lot of ice, uh, the kick step really comes in handy to help jab those crampon points into whatever you're walking on. So it's really just what builds the basis for every step you do uh, for the next forever. <laughs> uh, so now I'm going to talk about a uh, slight version on the kick step. This is building off the kick step before. This is called, well, I at least call it the duck step. And what I'm gonna do is I, instead of having my feet straight in front of me, I'm gonna splay them out a little bit. This is similar to the herring bow technique with skis. When you uh, ascend a small slope and you don't wanna like uh, take off your skis or anything, but it's still uh, fairly steep. So by spreading my feet apart, that helps, uh, <clears throat> that helps getting me purchase into the snow. This can be a little bit weird for your first time doing it, and a lot of times people will overcompensate and bring their feet way out, but you don't really need to do that. You just need a slight diagonal angle on the snow. I'm going to kick, and I just have my feet slightly splayed away from each other. It's nothing, uh, nothing that is painful, or even for the least flexible ankles out there, you still should be able to do this and it allows me to stand, ascend slightly steeper snow that maybe if I put my foot in, it'll slide a bit. And if I just try to kick, I can gain an upward angle and then my foot will slide out. And so in this case, this is common to be used. Snow, slide, snow slopes like this where the snow is pretty uh, soft and you can easily kick your feet in, but you still need that purchase for a steeper slope. The main problem with the duck step is that it can get old after a while and it can be a little hard to do on a long slope. Uh, first of all, it's a little less ergonomic to keep your feet splayed out like that, and um, it, it can tire out one of your legs. And so one thing you can do, also on roughly the same steepness of slope, or even steeper slopes, is the sidestep. This is where I'm mainly putting most of my uh, force when I stand up on one leg. It's always gonna be the uphill leg, so in this case it's my right leg. I make sure that that foot's planted well, and I can stand up, just on my knee, stand up, lock my leg in place, swing my left foot around, and kick above my right foot. Bring right foot around again. Notice how the left leg really didn't, I didn't stand up on my left leg. And then I do that again, stand up on the right foot. 
and I can just keep on going up the slope like this. Especially if it's real good soft snow, you can go real fast. You can see how um, I'm taking really small steps. And that's because, again, mountaineering and usually snow climbing in general is a battle of inches. And so we want to save as much energy as we can while we are out there getting our 10,000 steps in. And so by having a small step instead of a really wide step, that helps save some energy. I like to call these elephant steps when you have to bring your knee or bring your heel above your knee or something and really grind up on it. But in snow slopes, it doesn't matter where you step. So I'm just doing really small steps. I'm also incorporating something called the rest step. The rest step is resting one of your legs while the other leg is working. So like I said before, here I'll even switch sides. In this case, my left leg is gonna be the working leg while my right foot gets some rest. And so what I'm gonna do is stand up on that left leg, lock my knee in place so I'm standing on my skeleton rather than my muscles. Swing that right foot around, you notice how that's really not doing too much work. And then I just move up on that right foot and kick my leg in. Or I kick my left leg in again. And so the idea is that one leg is always doing more work than the other, so you can rest that leg. And once you get good at it, you can switch. When that upper leg gets tired, you switch to the next leg and then start going up with that, uh, with the less tired leg while the other leg uh, gets rest. So this third technique we're gonna use is the final technique for when you have the steepest section of snow apart from actually climbing with an ax. So these, all these are snow walking techniques, and then when you move into snow climbing, it's a bit different. But this is all just ascending steep snow slopes that you can still walk on your feet. And so this would be if the snow was maybe about 45 to 60-ish degrees, or 60 is probably still climbing, so I'll say about 45 to 50 degrees snow slope, um, roughly. <laughs> Those are kind of numbers I just pulled out of nowhere, but that's roughly what we're talking about. As well as if the snow is a bit more firm and you want a bit more purchase to really kick yourself in. And also on ice, this is a really nice technique uh, to help ascend the ice fast, but you still get some rest. The majority of fatigue in this technique is gonna be on your calves uh, because it's gonna involve actually front pointing into the snow. Now I say front pointing, but I'm still not wearing crampons because you can do this technique without crampons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the foot that I want uh, pointed straight into the snow, and then my other foot's gonna be my rest foot. So, in this case, my right foot's gonna be pointed straight into the snow, so I'm gonna kick with my toe, and I'm going to stand up on my toes and on my calf and keep my heel, my heel is more or less gonna stay out of the snow, it may go down a bit, and my left foot is gonna be off to the side in duck step. So that's sort of my rest leg. So I kick with my climbing foot, and in with my rest foot. And I just keep doing that up the slope. If, I'm, if my right foot gets tired, then I just simply switch to my left foot being the one that kicks in while my right foot is off to the side. You notice how this is a combination between sort of front pointing and duck technique. So a lot of people were, will refer to this as the hybrid technique. At least that's what I hear is the most common one used in America, the most common term. Uh, me personally, I've called it the French technique for a while, so maybe other people do that too, or maybe I'm just was completely out of the loop. Either way, uh, this is it gets you up the slope the fastest, but it is the most fatiguing. Um, and uh, if you don't have especially strong calves, this may not be the best technique for you because it could cause hazards along the way, especially if you have a long run out to possibly a bad ending, or if the ice gets a little too steep, or you don't have the correct materials to do this technique with. However, on snow like this, super soft, mushroom-like snow, uh, it's no big deal and you can easily use this technique. So after the hybrid technique, the final step that I'm going to talk about is going to be uh, just standard front point technique. Some people also like to call this making mailboxes. Uh, it's definitely the most tiring technique, but it gains you the most ground fast, the fastest. So. It's kind of something that you want to do in little spurts here and there, uh, maybe to get past a section that's more dangerous than other sections, or to catch up to someone just when you're trying to get up train real fast. So it's essentially just like the hybrid technique, only instead of having one foot off to the side, I'm just going to kick both my feet in, standing up on my calves, and go straight up the slope. This works well with crampons and more icy terrain as well, 
and this also builds the basis for any type of snow climbing or nearly any type of ice climbing uh, if you are planning to move on to that. Well guys, that was snow walking. Keep in mind, it's, it's walking, right? So these aren't exactly techniques I will use while climbing up slopes of snow. However, they're not, I could still end up using this technique during snow climbing, but these are mostly techniques that you find while snow walking. Whereas you switch to more like front pointing while you're on steeper snow slopes and stuff like that. This is sort of the baseline part and then we'll have a different video where we get into steeper snow and how to climb steeper snow. If you have anything you want to add, please leave a comment. If you want to see a different video about snow stuff, then stay tuned. I'll be making more and I'll see you guys in the next video. So first thing I'm going to talk about is your basic walking in snow. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fell in a tree wall. <laughs>